Hello friends, in this video we will predict dependent variable and we will also see how can we calculate confidence interval around it. So the task in this video is a sales manager wants to predict ice cream sales based on temperature. He knows that sales tend to increase with higher temperature. How can he use temperature to predict his ice cream sales when the temperature is 44 degrees? What type of model could he use to make this prediction? So my request and advice would be to please watch my previous video on this particular topic about linear regression where I constructed the temperature and sales data and use linear regression to fit the model. The link is available in the description box and on the i button above reflected on the screen. As described in that video, temperature is x variable which is our independent predictor or explanatory variable. And sales is y variable, dependent and response variable. So now coming back here, we want to predict sales when temperature is 44 degrees. So when x is equal to 44, we need to calculate the predicted value for y. Plus, we also need to calculate confidence intervals around that as well. So let us construct the data. The same data mentioned in that video at i button above. So I name this data as my data and through data frame function, I create temperature and sales variable. Now I'm running the regression and I want to see the summary. So this is the summary. Now we want to calculate the predicted value for y. So let us do it manually to understand the fundamentals and then we'll do the same procedure in our study. So the LM equation is y is equal to a plus bx where y is my sales. a is the intercept, b is the slope for x and x is temperature. So here I can see that my intercept is this, temperature, the slope for temperature is this and just let me create this LM equation here. So when, when x is equal to 44, what is the value for this y? So I just have to put the value of x here and I can calculate the predicted value for y. So let us see the value for y. It is 57,052. So this is the value for y, the predicted value, of course. Now, let us do it in our studio. So for that, we can use the predict function to predict by when x is equal to 44. So let us see the class of predict. It is a function, of course. So I can look at the documentation for today. So running this in text, you can see here the documentation, the argument, the usage, description. Here. So now, through predict function, I can I can predict the value for y. So I'm using the regression results at my regression, and then creating data frame for new temperature equal to 44. I can get the same value, which we had calculated manually earlier. So it is about the same. I can also calculate it through using data frame first, creating a new variable, new temp. Where I say the temperature value equals to 44, and then using this variable new temp in my predict function here and the regression results at my regression, I can calculate the same value. So, this is the predicted value for y. Now, for the second part of the time, we need to calculate confidence interval. We have seen that when y is equal to 57,050. It is a single value. We may, we may call it a point S P. It's a single number. When I say that when the temperature is 44 degrees, am I sure that the value for sales would be 57,050 exact? I may not be 100% sure. Right? Because a point estimate is a sample statistic that we calculate from a sample to predict the population parameter. Because it's not practical to collect data for the entire population. 
So we may not be 100% confident that the true value of the population parameter is exactly this number, 57,050. Because single values are often affected by several factors, like it might be time consuming for us to collect data for the entire population. At the same time, it might be expensive or it may prone to sampling error. We may take multiple samples as well because it would help to make our estimates more reliable, but it is usually impractical or impossible to do so. So that is why we calculate range of values. We call it interval estimation or confidence interval. These range of values likely contain our true population. Instead of one value, instead of single value, we have range of values. These range of values comes with a confidence level. That is why we call this interval estimation as confidence interval. The confidence level is the probability that the interval estimate contains our true parameter. So it states the probability of how likely true parameter falls within confidence interval. So when we have 95% confidence level, suppose it means that 95 times out of 100, our confidence intervals shall contain the true population parameter. For more detailed knowledge, you may watch my other video on t test, confidence levels, confidence intervals, and regression coefficient. So, coming back here, we may add one more argument in this syntax, which we have used earlier. To predict the value for y, we may write interval is equal to in double quotes confidence and we may run the syntax. So here we may see that the predicted value of y is the same which we have calculated earlier. Besides that, we also have this lower and upper confidence interval. And you may see that this value lies within this range of values the lower and upper and by default when we do not mention any confidence level it takes confidence level as 95 percent this is the value at 95 percent we may change our level to 90 percent 99 percent whatever but we may write one more argument here for level and mentioning that we need 90 percent confidence level 0 0.90 and then we may run this in there. So here we get the lower and upper confidence interval at confidence level 90%, while the point estimate is the same. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.